Sirius, what is the biggest gap you've seen between the technical skills someone listed on their resume, and their actual skills once they got the job? What happened when this gap became apparent? I used to run engineering for a large company. Contractors were brought in by a third-party headhunter company, so oftentimes I would see a resume one day and would be training the person the next day. One day a new contract engineer started. The hiring manager I was working with claimed this guy had extensive experience. His resume certainly suggested it. Within the first week, I noticed that the guy was making elementary mistakes everywhere. His work was sloppy, disorganized, and oftentimes flat-out wrong. He would get extremely argumentative even if I made soft suggestions on how to do things differently. One day my phone kept going off, and it was employees calling to complain about this guy messing with their files. I had to have a talk about proper file etiquette, and used it as an opportunity to retrain everyone in the department. I had a talk with the contractor on the side and told him that it cannot happen again. I had IT restrict his right access, and I would handle data mergers myself for the time being. The next day I had to fire him. He somehow found a loophole where he could still write to the network, and he somehow overwrote read-only files, later found to be a glitch in the software that he deliberately exploited, and overwrote the work of around 50 people. I got a call from a director who was furious. IT had to pull backups from two days prior, effectively wiping out the work that everyone had made for the past 48 hours, except for a few people who stored files locally, plus the time lost during the backup transfer. The estimated cost of that stunt was around $220,000. A certain water company had to employ a lot of new HGV tanker drivers. There were hundreds of applicants, HR shortlisted and 30 to 40 interviewed. One of the successful candidates was offered and accepted a position. On his first day he was inducted and then taken to tanker we was to be allocated. On seeing this he said I can't legally drive that. It turned out he had not lied on his CV or in the interviews. Very embarrassing for HR and the interviewers. They paid for the guy to get the appropriate trading and license in the end. I got hired to do fiberglass work at a big boat shop. I went out to the shop and the shop boss said, Oh, good, the new outboard guy. I said, No, I'm the new glass guy. He already had two glass guys. HR apparently thought being a guy of some kind was enough. Did you keep your job? No. Technically was fired in the first 60 seconds. Lifeguards who couldn't swim. I worked as a lifeguard for the Red Cross at a pool between my junior and senior years in high school. About halfway through the season they started randomly testing people doing red hat drills, someone wears a red swim cap and pretends to need help. Two of the girls, it turned out, were not only not even lifeguards but couldn't swim enough to make it across the pool. Lifeguards aren't tested on their ability to swim. Normally just back checking that the certification is real is enough. I worked several jobs as a lifeguard while I was a teenager. I could swim, quite well in fact, but was never actually tested by the people hiring me, sometimes large beachfront hotels. I feel like it would be silly to lie about not being able to swim when your job is literally to prevent and also swim with the added weight of another human being. I worked with a guy who was a C-level director of a branch of a major company, had a gift of gab, and fooled everyone to believe he was competent, professional, all-knowing, and highly experienced. He literally didn't know how to even type didn't know how to use a computer or printer or basic Excel or even basic Outlook slash email. He used a physical Rolodex, this was in 2018. Eventually he started using me as his personal dictation machine because his typing was jabbing pointer fingers onto a keyboard hoping to get through an email within an hour, and I knew I had to get the fuck out. He was so charismatic that people didn't realize that he was just a narcissistic, delusional fuckwit who knew just the bare minimum about the industry to act like he knew everything, shake hands with anyone important, and use his power to benefit only himself and make himself look good. 
Meanwhile, his branch of the company is falling apart because he's basically a fraud. He was also doing weird shady things with suppliers, siphoning money for himself. Later, I heard he was fired for sexual harassment of multiple young women interns. Just your average sociopath dirtbag who slithers in and out of regular society, creating havoc for everyone. We had a new hire that claimed 12 years of experience, he could operate any piece of equipment on the job site and was a certified and qualified rigger. We could all tell he was full of shit but it was an entry-level job and we treat all new hires like they know nothing until we see otherwise. The problem was he was an arrogant know-it-all who responded to people trying to teach him with anger and, I already know that. He volunteered to rig a large vertical cylindrical object weighing about 3,000 pounds. A co-worker was sent to peer check him but was cussed out for trying to help. The object had lifting eyes but was top-heavy so a sling was needed at the top to stabilize it. Instead of a choker hitch he used a single basket hitch and sent the load without a tag line. It was the only time in my life I've been terrified on a job site. If the wind would have blown a dozen people could have been killed. Thankfully that was his last job with us. I hate for someone to lose their livelihood but it's better he lost his job than someone else lose life or limb because his pride was worth more than our safety. What an asshole. You can get away with being an asshole at work as long as you're good at your job. The better you are, the bigger an asshole you can be, within reason. You usually can't get away with being an incompetent asshole. And certainly not an unsafe, incompetent asshole. I got a pretty good one. My dad was a metallurgical engineer in the 80s. The company he worked for decided to send him to Greece because one of their clients had a problem with one of their steel mill and he told HR he knew a little bit of coding. He gets to Greece and another engineer from the same company picks him up at the airport, that person later became his best friend. Ah you must be the Siemens expert we've been waiting for. What do you mean Siemens expert? I told them I knew a little bit of coding but I'm not an expert. I barely know the basics. I'm just an engineer. Holy shit, we're fucked. They get to the steel mill and up in one of the control room. My dad is trying to learn everything he can and at the same time pretend that he knows what he's doing because he's got Greek employees watching him. His friend is trying to distract the client's employees while my dad tries to code something with the little time he had to study Siemens S7, kinda like someone trying to get as much information from a textbook when a teacher surprises you with a pop quiz. Before I tell you what happens next, I must tell you how big this steel mills are. I visited one when I was a kid and boy they are big. It's basically a huge oven the size of a two-story house inside of a massive building. It's enormous and there's a lot heat going in there. My dad runs the code and the oven starts working. A slice of metal starts going out of the oven but here's the problem, it doesn't stop. Something is supposed to chop the metal coming out of the oven and the exit door should close. The exit door of the oven is being kept open by this slice of metal that keeps coming out. At this point, he had no other choice but to use the emergency stop button. Fast forward four months later, they got the steel mill working. My dad told me that the client's employees definitely knew he wasn't an expert but never said anything. Oh we hired this guy who listed 30 years of field experience in oil refineries to help with new plant commissioning. Part of the job is to take samples from locations at height. In this case, it was about 10 feet up. Every oil refinery has sample locations slash meters slash valves in much, 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 higher locations. Turns out he was afraid of heights. He was given three months to find a new job. Myself. I had worked as an independent artist for my whole life but a few years ago I fell into debt that got out of control, that's a story for another time, so I got a call center job, easy enough. The job was in fact very easy and I was a top performer in no time. A team lead that I worked with quit in a rage with the manager and was hired as a manager in a different company, 
which then called me based on his recommendation and offered me a management role. I of course took it since I needed the money to pay off my debt. The company offered less benefits than my previous one but the role's salary was almost triple. This is the story of how I became the manager of a call center that dealt with U.S. insurance claims, with absolutely no leadership skills. It was quickly shown as I was unable to do the very specific methodology these kind of places usually need for their operation, but since I had the closing shift, I usually worked with a small team and all my agents were super chill, I was a super chill manager in return. I had no idea how a team is supposed to be managed, no experience, but that made all the difference for my team to be super happy with me as their boss, the job was done, I was able to wing it through the results of the team, but the account manager always knew my skill set was not the right one for the job. I cleared my debt and quit. I hope never to go back to an office environment. I was lucky with the team I had, but by no means it was an enjoyable experience. I work at a company in a Hispanic country, we provide services to an American company so English is a must for us. A girl got hired because she was either a friend of the recruiters or the boss don't know but she couldn't speak a bit of English at all, so she was always trying to reply to emails using Google Translate and ignored every phone call. The company paid her English classes but she eventually quit after our customers got super mad. I'm a security guard and we had a new employee a young buck fresh from the school banks boy had a lot of experience on internships provided by his shit school. He didn't know proper walkie-talkie etiquette only some made-up bullshit from his school had almost no confidence because all school internships were regulated by the school so he never had to confront anyone that would give him trouble, didn't know certain important laws. Poor lad was thrown to the lions by his school with a sword made of foam. Boss didn't really want to fire him for incompetence but also didn't want to spend money on additional training. So me and my bud took the lad under our wing and gave him a reality check on how security guards actually work and how to do and respond in certain situations. Now he is a full-fledged and reliable security guard that knows how to do shit and what not to do. At least he was teachable. Some people think they know everything and don't listen to anyone but themselves. Cook came in claiming to have worked in a Michelin star restaurant. Didn't know what a walk-in was, didn't know what julienne cut meant, then wrung out a rag full of grease onto the floor in front of another cook carrying a pot of hot fry oil. He also felt that washing any dishes was beneath him and refused to clean up at closing. I fired him before his second shift started. Che, this sounds like one of my best friend's exes. He went on and on about being a trained chef and dressed down some poor waitress at a brunch we went to over some I don't even remember some problem he had with a chorizo benedict. Guy worked at Taco Bell. My favorite is having engineers of 20 years experience join my team. Mind you, my team is composed of all data center engineers whom have an enterprise or MSP background. The issue becomes super apparent when they're asked to do projects and have no skill or comfortability with them. That's when we ask what they can do. After beating around the bush and probing, you find they don't know how to do anything at all. That's what 20 years of experience of internal IT doing nothing all day gets you. Needless to say, I am now a part of all technical hiring processes. This is actually one of my biggest fears doing internal IT. I know I can do shit, but also, being IT, I know the world is moving fast that I also at any point might one day not be able to do shit. I think I phrased it wrong, it's more of a work internal and find the need to not want to do anything more. I have had no issues hiring some internal folks, it's the potential to learn we look for. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe.